and welcome back to another adventure of Advanced RC Adventures. A2RC here. This is a channel where we investigate, explore, build and explain, upgrade and advance Nitro RCs to another level. Come start a new adventure with me. So today we have something special. A Nova Rossi 2016 Ison Race 12. This is um, an engine that I wanted to bring to everybody because we're talking about the C12s. We talked a little bit about the M12, which will come out in a uh, later video, and the LR3 Bluehead race version that um, we looked at just a little bit ago. So that LR3 came out in, I believe um, I said 2005. Well, roughly 10 years later, we have the ISON 12, and it's still built on the same kind of um, big sister C12 platform that the LR3 has. But these, um, this particular engine, um, if the LR3 um, wasn't a race engine, this definitely is. So this is brand new. It's um, I've gone through it before. Um, inspected lube desiccate bag in there so let's go ahead and open up and dive in to this very vintage very awesome Nova Rossi Ison 12 so let's cut open our pack here Our desiccant bag here, take that, put that to the side. And let's take a, a little uh, look see here. We have a nice 12R for racing and for Rossi, made in Italy here. Take a look at our block. So, this is very similar to the LR3 block. It's um, a tall block again. These ribs here are very um, similar to the C12 so and the, the block itself um, of course like I mentioned it's related to the C12 those side exhaust engines um, but this is a race specific um, version we have um, the back plate nice little R down inside of there standard uh, no Verasi back plate bolts bump start Another made in Italy here. Nice Nova in the cast here. We've got an original blue Nova Rossi um, rear exhaust gasket. Have our nice big M7 um, pinch bolt again. SG shaft. Pick it up here on the camera. We've got a nice Rossi um, logo. This is not the label logo glued epoxy on. This actually is cast in into the carburetor. So let's go ahead and um, pop off our carb here, and we will take a look at this Ison R12. As I mentioned before, a lot of the Rossi's and the OS have um, an M6, but some of the race versions have this bigger M7. So this is a three needle carb. We have our high speed needle here. We have our low speed needle here. That's on the slide portion of um, the barrel, and then we have our third uh, mid-speed needle here on the side. Remember that LR3 did not have um, a three-needle carb, it used a two-needle carb. We've got a nice, beautiful, flat 
seal or o-ring seal here on the base of the carb set that to the side there we have an embedded o-ring down inside of the block so that's very similar to the other um, LR3 version down inside here let's take out this pinch bolt same type of situation brass nut let's do a little measure here on the pinch bolt it's a five millimeter diameter pinch bolt back cap off here's the original seal let's go ahead and take off this back plate we'll take a look at the um, internals and then we'll take off the head and we'll keep going So these use standard M2.5 bolt. And they're not very long. Let's, well, let's measure this. Looks like they are a 6 millimeter M2.5 um, backplate bolt. Give our backplate just a little, little twist. Make sure our piston is up, just in case it's an interference, and um, it is. You can see this groove here. It's not a flat cutout. There's a groove in the back plate, which makes the piston interference with the back plate, and that helps with a little bit of um, better sealing. It has a formal uh, butyl o-ring seal on the back plate there and again a little R down inside um, nice um, very nice looking back plate. Let's take a look inside here you can see our crank you can see our connecting rod let's go ahead and pop off the head Now I took the liberty when I went through the engine originally to swap out the head bolts. So when I take them out, we'll give them a little measure and um, we'll see. Pop these bolts out. give these a little bit of a measure here so this is an M3 and it uses a two and a half millimeter um, hex driver and these are 14 long so when I swapped out the head bolts remember I you want to measure that diameter and you want to make sure that um, it's similar or very um, close to the original thread outside thread diameter as the original bolt. There's a big positive of um, replacing those flat heads if you can or if you want. To me um, it's more than a preference, it's a nice upgrade. You can have the same quality of screw as long as you buy a quality screw and replace it with either the back plate or the head bolts and it will help you um, in the future. Let's go ahead and take a look at the head here. Beautiful dark purple. Got some shine cuts there on the side. Got some cutouts here so that you can reach down to the engine mount bolts. Nice Novorossi ISON 12. Very, very pretty head. So notice we're working on a head button. See here on the engine. 
nice raw scene. Now this particular head button um, is a little bit interesting. We have a couple dimples here that's denoting the rear, but we also have three dimples here. Let's um, pop this out and take a look. So that fitment of the head button is nice and tight. So this is a turbo plug. Let's hope that um, we can catch this on camera. So let's look at these dots. So the three dots here on this bottom section, as I understand, actually um, denotes a code. And then we have here the triangular kind of looking dots. And it actually has an arrow which points to the rear. So that's kind of interesting. Not all the Rossi head buttons um, look like that. A lot of times you'll just have a couple dimples, one, two, three, or four, um, and that denotes the rear. But here we have kind of like a, a trifecta of dimples plus an arrow um, pointing to the rear. We have a head shim here. It's a single head shim, which is relatively um, common for the time period. This is a, a 0.3 aluminum shim. Rossi did make a couple other um, head shims out of brass and aluminum, and if you wanted or needed to um, change it, you could, but that um, 0.3 aluminum is pretty standard. Let's get this sleeve out of here. Take a look at that sleeve in just a second. Pop out the piston. Let's take a little look here at the piston. So you have a skirt about um, halfway around. This has um, two oil grooves up top. This is a captured wrist pin on both sides there's a spring clip on, on both sides of the wrist pin. We have an N2 code connecting rod and a very very nice knife edge here on the um, both sides of the connecting rod. We have brass bushings top and bottom. Just a beautiful looking piston for this ISON 12. Bring in our push block here, push out our crank. This is a beautiful looking crank. So it's not coated, but we have a nice drilled and silicone filled crank. oil and vacuum hole. We have um, a code 3311 with a Rossi insignia. Now notice here we're not, we do not have any um, slugs, but we are balanced. We've got a nice cut edge here and a little shark fin or so cut out and um, the hole for the in, um, induction port through the crank has been opened up. So this is a lot, if you recall or go back to the video for the um, LR3, the R12 LR3. It is a similar crank but this definitely has a little bit more work done to it. That LR3 crank was drilled but not filled. This um, ISON 12 is. And um, this has a little bit more work done to that balance lobe of the crank, but a very nice um, upgraded crank for this ISON 12. So let's take a look at the block itself. There is an indicator pin here, nice big um, milled cutouts for the boost and transfer ports down inside. We have a chrome steel ball and cage rear bearing and the same for the front. 
these Rossi blocks are, are just um, beautiful. Someone took the time to design these not only well, but um, very pretty looking as well. I really enjoy them myself. All right, so let's bounce back to this sleeve. We definitely have some work done to this ISON 12 sleeve. Nice, big exhaust port that definitely has dog ears on the sides. This is an ABC construction engine. So we have um, an aluminum piston, brass sleeve, chrome line sleeve. Let's take a look at this boost port. Nice big bevel here on the boost port and on the transfer ports. We have a nice big bevel, sweeping bevel for that airflow transfer. So we haven't talked about it yet. And if you um, are not aware, let's talk a little bit about how the air fuel mixture uses these ports within the engine for um, airflow com compression, combustion. So we all know that the exhaust port is the, um, the simplest thing. The exhaust, the consumed fuel is um, pushed out of the exhaust. Well, you gotta ask yourself, well, how's the fuel get in? And here's just a very um, quick, maybe introduction to how these um, three other ports work. And it is um, similar to multi-ports, four, five, six, seven, eight ports. But the other ports, this is a three-port arrangement. The other ports that you might see on different sleeves, they help to um, direct flow into the sleeve to help with better um, efficiency, especially at top end. Generally speaking, higher um, number of ports is for more top end RPM. And, um, Bigger, bigger single ports or called you know three, um, four, and even some five ports. It's generally for more low end torque or mid range speed. So the large majority of the air fuel mixture goes through these side transfer ports. So the boost port is directed. So if you can envision the air flow air fuel mixture rushes into these side ports and we have an exhaust port on the back side. Well, how do we get that exhaust out? That's what this boost port is for. It's angled in such a way that the airflow goes up to the top of the cylinder and helps to circulate that exhaust and push it out while the side transfer ports are rushing air underneath it. So this boost port is actually angled, if you take a look at your sleeve next time, it's actually angled with the bevel almost straight up. And that's what that does. That air fuel mixture rushes up from the boost port, mixes with the exhaust gases, and helps to push out the um, exhaust gas while the other gases are rushing in from the side. Now, it also, if you notice on the timing, if we can pick it up here, the timing of it all, the boost port itself is lower than um, the transfer ports. So what happens is that the transfer ports start to push in volume into the cylinder and then slightly later the boost port comes in and rushes a bunch of pressure and volume into the sleeve and then helps to rush it out the exhaust. So if you weren't aware of how um, your ports worked. That's a little introduction, a little 101 introduction on how that works. And then the bevels here, on more race versions of sleeves, these actually help to capture the new incoming um, mixture and push them towards the front and up and away from the exhaust because what we don't want to have happen is the the air volume go in and go directly out the exhaust. So that little bevel, and sometimes they look like fangs, sweeping bevels, and other ports to help direct that airflow in and up into that cylinder and not out the exhaust. So that's, a, again, a little information on um, sleeve technology and why you see some of the, the race engines and uh, modified engines have sleeve cutouts and ports like you do. 
these race engines and all Nova Rossi engines are beautiful to look at and great to use and awesome to run. So I hope you enjoyed taking a look at this overview and teardown of this vintage Nova Rossi Ison 12. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe. If you like anything nitro, 10 scale, and especially touring cars, then this is a place to be. So thanks for taking the adventure with me.